So I'm gonna explain how this combine works or how most rotary combines, how they work. So we're gonna be examining a 2588, a Case IH 2588, but just about all Case IH rotary combines are gonna be set up about the same. Just about all John Deere combines are gonna be set up about the same. New Holland, a little bit different. They have two rotors instead of just one. Kloss are a little bit different combines. They have rotors, but it's a different style. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but once I kind of explain a little bit more, but I'm gonna give you the, how a combine works from the perspective of an engineer who actually works on combines. So I kind of know a lot about kind of intricacies of how a combine works. So how all combines, everyone out on the market today has what's called a feeder house. And what a feeder house does, it provides basically two, it does two key functions. Number one is lift and carry the head. So all combines cannot harvest grain by themselves. They need what's called a header up front. And what the header does, depending on your crop type, it, get, it cuts, picks, gathers, and feeds the crop into the combine. We don't have a header on right now just because we're working on the machine, but heads would go on your feeder house. All combines have that, kind of have that feature. And another thing that what the feeder house does, it takes crop from the head and feeds it into the machine. And it does that, it has a, what's called a feeder house front drum and then a feeder house chain and slats. So now different combine, most combines have chains here. Some have belts like the Colossus but most of them basically serve the same function. They basically take crop, they hand it off from the head, grab it, and then bring it to the back of the machine. And that's basically what the feeder house is. And as I was saying before, if you guys are ever working around combines, there's this important safety feature right here on all machines, and it's basically your feeder house lift cylinder lock. And what that does is when you shove it down, like what I'm going to, if I can figure out how to do it, needs two hands. But basically, this lock, if I would ever lose hydraulic pressure, if one of these cylinders would bust or whatnot, this lock would actually prevent the feeder house from dropping all the way down. So let's just say if I was working underneath the head or something like that, I would always recommend, actually I don't even recommend, you need to put your feeder, feeder house safety lock down because too many people have died because they haven't done that. And they just get crushed and it's sad. Farmers gotta look out for each other and we need to basically not take shortcuts, so. That is an important safety feature right there. But we got head, feeds it into the feeder house, feeds it into, this is where all combines kind of diverge. The Case IH right here has what's called a transition code, where if I would basically take off this front wall, it'd have a big cone that necks down into the rotor. And before that, it's got like a, a, little, um, a little beater that is like your rock trap, because you also have a rock trap down here which if I would open this up, it's called a rock trap because it does exactly what it says, it traps rocks. So this Case IH Combine's got a little bit of beater right above this, and if a rock or a hard object would come in, it would come into contact with that beater, it would hit it a little bit faster than the grain, and it would basically beat it down to that rock trap. So we got feeder house into the rotor. So now this Case IH 2588 Combine is a rotary machine. <coughs> And it threshes and it separates all with one rotor. And that's where the different machines diverge because a Case IH and a Deere are very similar in this aspect where they both use a rotor to separate. I'm trying to grab my flashlight. Let's take the shield off. So here's your rotor. It's got a threshing section right here and a separating section back here. So what I mean by that is after it comes into the feeder house, it's got basically auger flaps or auger auger flights, that's what I'm looking for. Auger flights to basically feed the crop into the rotor, which you can barely see up front there. You guys probably won't be able to make it out on the camera. But after that, it comes into the threshing section. What the threshing section does is it takes your crop and it, it threshes it and it really tries to separate it from the plant or the rest of the plant material. So for example, if you have an ear of corn, which I'm looking around, I don't have any right now, don't have any with me, but basically it takes the kernels and really just kind of threshes them apart. It really breaks them up and separates the corn from the rest of the plant or in the same case for soybeans or wheat. So that's a section right here. So you have a spinning rotor and a stationary concave. So these, these do not move, but inside the rotor is spinning. And on the rotor, it's got these things called threshing elements, which I'll try to zoom out. See that little gray thing right there? It's got a little, little bit of grooves. That's a threshing element. 
Case IH has all, a lot of small threshing elements all throughout the machine. They're almost all the way to the back. Then you got a little bit of rasp bars and whatnot in the back. I'll get to that though. So you get threshing elements up front and they thresh corn or plants that are moving through against stationary concaves, what these called. And these concaves or modules, depending on who, what company is what, they can be changed out for different crops. So for example, wheat and canola, they thresh much harder than let's just say corn. And corn's much, much bigger than wheat or canola. So depending on what crop you're, you're harvesting, you need to have different concaves or modules in there. So this combine is set up with three concaves. The first and second concave are identical. They have large wire concave, which is basically just a kind of a, an industry key term where you got these crossbars that go across the concave and then you got wires going down in between. It's called large wire because there's a larger gap. You can stick your finger up through it. See? So you got large wire concave, large wire concave, and then the third one is also a large wire concave with every other the wire removed. And what the reason for that is, we want this every other wire removed on this last one because up front, you really want to kind of keep the grain in a little bit just to kind of really keep the rotor pressure up. But as you get farther, you want to open up to let more grain out. And that's why after this, you go into the separating section, see how much more open they are? There you go. And this is the separating section of the rotor. The point of this is to basically just try and separate as much of the grain off of the rest of the plant material before it gets discharged. Because after this point right in the back, after if any grain goes out behind that, it's lost. But again, so it's got little uh, threshing elements and some have rasp bars, which a threshing element you can really see right there. It's just like I said, a little element the size of my fist. But a rasp bar is, imagine three threshing elements, the size of them, kind of right in the line right there. And you can kind of see one. Again, I apologize, I'm not taking apart the machine because I don't have all day. But that's kind of how it works. And then, so crop is constantly being circled through the rotor. Trash goes out the back. So we'll follow the trash stream just to make it easier. So trash goes out the back. It does not go through the concaves or the separator grates. And it gets thrown out the back of the rotor and then it gets chewed up by this what's called a chopper. So this chopper is spinning extremely fast. It's got knives kind of all the way around there. And depending on if you have a really viney crop like soybeans, you can actually put the second set of knives right there into this material screen to really chew up the residue. And that does it really two parts. It really kind of chews up the residue and it's going so fast it flings it, hits this back wall, and normally Normally on this machine, you'd have two spreader discs on these little uh, kind of drive cogs. Two spreader discs would spread the material out. And you'll kind of see, uh, as I'm voicing this over, you'll see kind of crop stream and drone footage of this happening. But these are your spreader discs, and they spread out your material. So that's what happens to your trash, but then your grain and your chaff, which chaff is basically, it's like your finer material that gets exited out of the rotor, but it's not grain, you don't want to keep it. It's part of your mog or material other than grain. Anything that gets discharged out of the concaves or all the separator grates, they go down to this auger bed and this auger bed is continuously moving, bringing and moving all the grain and mog up the, towards the rear of the machine and gets dropped onto the step pan, which the step pan right here is shaking. So as it shakes, it moves, it basically just steps down each run. And this machine's shaking like 200 times a second or 200 times a minute, I should say. Two to 300, I'm not, not sure on this machine. I guess I probably should preface, I'm an engineer for John Deere. I don't, I've never engineered or worked on Case IH combines. I just know combines because I've been around them a lot, both on the farm and at work. And no, I'm not saying anything that's privileged, just so you guys know. This is all common information. I just happen to know a lot about the machine. So yeah, as this is shaking, grain and material is walking down these steps and eventually it goes over these finger bars. So after it exits the rotor, it goes what's in called the cleaning shoe. And what the cleaning shoe does is its main goal is to separate grain from chaff and mog and stuff you don't want in your grain tank. And the big two parts of that is it uses air and mechanical separation. We'll start with air. Air is generated by a fan. Right here, the, here's your Case IH barrel fan. It basically is spinning and blasts air. You won't be able to see it because it comes on the inside of the machine, but basically blasts air through that path up into the crop stream. So that's how air is generated. 
And then when I say mechanical separation, what that is, is remember how I said the uh, cleaning shoe is shaking two to 300 times per, per minute? What is shaking are these elements right here. You can kind of see they're just like little finger teeth that are kind of pointing towards the back of the machine. You got what's called a top sieve and a low and a bottom sieve. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. But what this is doing is as this is shaking, grain is moving back. How these fingers are laid out as it shakes, it kind of pushes the machine, pushes the grain back a little bit. Plus the airflow going through is also pushing stuff back. So grain falls through the gap right here in the fingers. Grain, if there was no air, a lot of things would fall through. But when you have your machine set right, and when you hear, when you hear farmers saying you gotta set their machine, it's basically you got different settings you'll adjust, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But if once you have your machine set right, as this is shaking and airflow is blowing up through this, grain and a little bit of mog will flow, will flow through this, but the rest of your mog and chaff will go right out the back, and again, onto these spinners. So you guys remember how I said top and bottom sieve? Well, they, all, they provide two different purposes. The top sieve, anything that gets walked out the back of the top sieve is lost. It's chaff, it's crap that gets get discharged out of the machine. And if there's any grain in it, we lose it and it's profit out of our, it's money out of our pocket. But anything that falls through that has to fall through a second one. You can kind of see, here's a reference to my finger. This, the chap, the upper sieve is a little bit bigger than the lower sieve. It's about 70% uh, the size of the upper sieve. And what that does is it basically provides a secondary screening where combines aren't perfect. You're not gonna get 100% of the grain, but you wanna do the best job that you can. So you basically have a secondary cleaning system, which is what this is. So because there are smaller fingers, it's gonna be a lot harder for, for trash to go through, for trash and the bigger material to go through, but it's also gonna be a little bit harder for grain to go through. So let's just say you have a big kernel that's easily able to go through this back one, but it's a little bit harder to get through this next one so it, so it gets walked off the back. Well, shoot, we don't want that. So what happens when it walks off the, the back half of the, sieve, or the bottom sieve, it goes into what's called the return system. What the return system does is right here, anything that gets walked off the back gets, gets elevated up back into the rotor cage. And what that does is it basically gives the second grain and a little bit of mog a second chance to get basically captured. So anything that gets thrown out the back of the bottom sieve goes into return and we get a second chance to capture it. Anything that gets walked off the back of the top sieve is grain lost. So yeah, it's a little bit complicated. Along with this, there are five main adjustments on each machine. Those five adjustments are your rotor speed, which is how fast your rotor is spinning, your concave clearance, which is how tight your concaves are right here to your actual rotor itself. So the tighter you are, let's just say corn, for example, the tighter you are, the more threshing you'll have, so the less corn you'll have left at all in the cobs, but the more broken up and chipped up cobs you'll probably have in your grain tank sample. And then you got your three cleaning shoe settings, your fan speed, which is how fast your fan is spinning, and your top and bottom sieve opening. And what your top and bottom sieve opening is basically the distance, if you draw a straight line from this finger to this finger and measure it, so straight line to straight line, that, it's that distance right there. So on a typical corn setting, like on this machine, would be a 25 concave clearance, 300 rotor, uh, I think 1150 fan. I'm stretching on this. I can't remember chaffer sieve because I never touched them. 19 chaffer, 12 sieve. Sorry guys, sometimes I get confused. So John Deere calls their top and bottom sieves chaffer and sieve, so that's what I just call it a lot, so that's just kind of out of habit. But Case H calls it upper sieve, lower sieve, and I think most people call it upper sieve, lower sieve. So that's kind of why I say that sometimes. That's basically 12 millimeter gaps between each finger on the bottom sieve, 19 millimeter gaps on the top sieve, and then like I said, 1150 RPMs on the fan and whatnot. Everything else on the machine, like I was saying, the, the chopper speed, the feeder house speed, the spreader speed, all that is not adjustable, it's fixed because we don't need to adjust that. And I did lie a little bit. So outside of the five main machine functions, there are other adjustable functions like your chopper speed, feeder house speed and whatnot, but they're not adjustable from the cab. And there's usually only two adjustments, like chopper's got a high and low speed, feeder house has got 
depending on the machines. I believe our machine has two speeds, but sometimes they can be variable. Anyway, there, you can adjust other things, but it's just not as easily adjusted as the five machine settings because you don't need to adjust them potentially multiple times a day. It's usually once a crop, you gotta adjust it. So like for soybeans, you run your chopper in high, corn, you gotta run your chopper in low. That's really the only difference. It's not very sensitive like a, like the five main adjustments on the machine because the five main adjustments vary very differently between crops. So let's just say corn and soybeans. For corn, your rotor's at 300. Your soybeans, your rotor's at like 500. You know, concave clearance, it's gonna be a little bit tighter, going from like 25 down to 18 or 15. Fan, a little bit lower. 1150 down to let's just say 900, 800, somewhere around there, or 1000 something. You drop a little bit. And then top sieve, lower sieve, closes a little bit, but not too bad. It's a lot of rambling, but I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. And if you guys have made it this far, be sure to hit that like button. We appreciate it. So we, we covered what happens on stuff that walks out the back of the top sieve and the lower sieve. But if it makes it through both of those, it goes into the clean grain system. So here you can kind of see the, the upper sieve will be basically right up on top. It's kind of hard for you guys to see. It's gonna be up on top here. The lower sieve is gonna be about down here. So this is kind of your gap where your lower sieve stuff falls. And this is the gap where the upper sieve stuff falls. But anything that goes through both of them gets kind of shook down into here because remember, this is shaking back and forth. And then it gets augered to the outside of the machine. So we've covered everything that's gone inside the machine so far. So after it gets augered to the outside of the machine, it goes into what's called the elevator, the clean grain elevator. And it basically gets elevated up to the grain tank. And then it gets stored in the grain tank. And the reason why combines have grain tank on grain tanks on them is basically just an efficiency play. If you didn't have a grain tank on a combine, you would always have to be unloading what your clean grain off of the machine. And you don't want that because that just it's inefficient. You don't need to be doing that. You can hold up to 300 on this machine 300 bushels and that basically provides you anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes of time between you need to dump. So that's kind of how the main core of the functions of the combine work. But you also have, obviously, you need to have an engine, which is up on top. You need to have a cooling system, which is kind of right here. You also need to have an air intake, which is right here, your rotary screen. You need to have a propulsion system so you can move. That's underneath right here. It's, hyd it's hydraulically driven. It's a hydrostat transmission. So it's driven right here, but on all of our machines, we also we have full wheel drive. So we also have drives in the back as well. And you also have a cab, which controls everything. On, on, and on modern combines, most controls are in the cab for just about everything. Man, I don't even want to step into this. It's clean. I'm going to. So here's your steering wheel. You turn this right. It steers in the back. So the back tires, if I turn it right, back tires go like this. So it'll kind of turn me to the right. Here's your hydrostat control. It's really simple. Make sure you're out of park. Make sure you're in a gear. Forward, back. Obviously I'm not going because the machine's not running. Here's your separator controls, which turns on everything but the feeder house. And this turns on your feeder house and your header. And then you have a bunch of other different controls like your throttle four wheel drive, basically uh, more flow to your two wheel drive, parking brake. Here's how you adjust your fan speed, your rotor speed and your concave clearance. And then your other two ma major machine settings are changed in the back there. On newer machines, it's electrically controlled, but on this one, it's still manual control. That's basically, that's the nuts and the bolts of a combine in your 20 minute summary, guys. How'd you like that? Do you want me, is there anything more in depth that you guys want me to go through? Oh yeah, I forgot. How does a Case IH machine differ from a Deer, from a New Holland, from a Kloss, from a Fent? Well, great, great, great question. Maybe one day at a farm show I can kind of go through this where I'll have be able to see all the combines kind of in the same video or in the same day. But for right now, I'll just talk about them. X9, John Deere X9 combine excluded, so not talking about that. Case IH and John Deere have the most similar combines. They have a feeder house, they have one rotor, they have a cleaning chute, and that's basically it. The, where they differ is kind of their more m smaller details, where John Deere's got a three-stage top cover, so basically the top of the rotor. Case IH has got a single one. Case IH has got, has got elephant ears and a transition cone to speed up crop going into the rotor, where John Deere has a, what's called a feed accelerator, so it's just a big beater that speeds it up. And then, so smaller things like that, but for the most part, John Deere and Case IH are very similar. Case IH came out with their axial flow combine back in the 80s, I believe. John Deere came out with the rotary combine in the late 1900s, I believe. 
1900s, 1990s, maybe 2000, 2001 ish area. So yeah, they are very similar. In all combines, I should say they have a feeder house, they have a grain tank, they have elevators, they have front wheel or uh, front wheel drive, rear wheel, rear wheel steer. All combines have a cab. So like there are a lot of similarities, but there are some major differences in the guts of the combine. A New Holland combine is basically exact same things, but they have a feed accelerator, just like a John Deere does, and they have two rotors. So they have to split their crop and they have two smaller rotors. I believe this is a 30 inch diameter rotor, same with the Deere, but New Holland I believe has two 18 inch diameter rotors, or maybe 18 or 24. Not 100% on that. A Kloss has what's called a, a hybrid system where they have what's called a threshing drum. Instead of a rotor, they have two rotors in the back to separate, but they have what's called a threshing drum and an uh, accelerator. I'm not, I'm not honestly not quite sure what they call it, what their exact terms are, but they basically have a couple drums up front which do the threshing work. They, so they basically run a couple um, threshing drums up front and then it transitions to two rotors in the back to really separate the grain. And then in like the, the Fent Ideal Combine, which is a newer one out in the market, that basically has same thing, feeder house, grain tank, all those things but it is most similar to a New Holland as their bigger machines have two rotors, but their smaller machine still only has one. So yeah. I don't know how that works or why they decided to do that, who knows. And then the last machine form is the Gleaner. And I don't even want to touch on it because they're so weird, but Brian Brown actually just ended up bought one. So congratulations, Brian. I can't wait for you to invite me out there to see it. But basically a Gleaner, instead of having a rotor that goes axial, it has a rotor that goes transverse. So it feeds on the left hand, on the right hand side of the machine, goes into the rotor like this, gets threshed and separated this way, and then cleaned out the back. So on axial combines, on most combines I should say, they basically, they feed in, so crop's going like this, and then it has to somehow get going into the rotor to get spun around like this. So it's a little bit harder to get crop going from a straight line into a rotor. And that's why Case IH has their transition cone to transition it into there. John Deere has their feed accelerator. Well, Gleaner's case is you basically, instead of kind of forcing the crop to make a 90 degree turn to get into a rotor, you basically go straight flat into a rotor as it gets kind of walked up the feeder house and then into the back of a rotor and then starts spinning around like this. Which I mean, to me in theory, it sounds good. I just don't see how you can make the throughput and push through it. But anyway, that's besides the point. But yeah, that's how kind of a rough guesstimate on without showing, without having other machines near me to show, that's kind of a rough explanation of how other companies do it. So how'd you guys like this video? Do you guys like videos like this where I'm just kind of talking technical? I know I don't speak words good always, but I know a lot about what I'm talking about, but did I get anything wrong? I'd love the comments down below. What's you guys' favorite combine? Do you guys have one at home? And this combine is still for sale, 2588 combine, 3,000 engine hours, 2,200 separator hours. If you guys are interested, email down below. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. We did do quite a bit of repairs on this machine and this machine will be filled ready by next week after the stuff, the amount of stuff that we've done to it. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, hit that like button, comment if you guys have any questions, and of course, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearts and Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.